the most powerful tool we have as a developer is automation. And you might not know how easy it is to implement with a tool like GitHub Actions. We will learn how we can use GitHub Actions together with Flutter for a complete continuous integration flow. This is something you can even follow along with your own project. So if you decide to do that, we are going to automate the boring stuff. And before we begin, it would be amazing if you could like and subscribe to the channel. Also make sure to let me know down in the comments what you would like to see next. And let's get into it. Before we jump into the code, we need to clarify some things first. For example, what is GitHub Actions, CI or Continuous Integration, Events, Workflows. If we move over to GitHub, you have probably seen this action tab before. So if we consider what can happen to a GitHub repo, you can get a PR, a star, fork and so on. These are considered events. You can have workflows running in the GitHub Actions. This will be triggered by those events. Now we can have a set of automated steps or instructions. This can be things like getting the Flutter repo, running Flutter test, building the Flutter application, or even deploying. And if one of these fails, you will get notified, making it very easy to see when you're doing something wrong. Now the amazing things about actions is that you don't have to create them from scratch. A lot of people in the community has probably already created the action you need. Now, what is continuous integration? It's the whole idea of committing early and often small commits to the repository. Those commits will be tested and you will quickly get feedback whether that commit has problems or not. Now let's move over to the code, see how we can get this set up. So in the root of the application, you will create a .github folder. After that, we create another folder and this folder should be named workflows. Now inside this folder, we can define all of our different workflows. So we will create a new file. This will be the continuous integration workflow. So we will just give it the name CI. Now if we move on and create in the actual workflow, define the name and then what scenario it should run. So here you have a bunch of different options, but we will go with pull request. And then we can also specify on which branches this pull request should affect. And in this case, this will run when we create a pull request for the master branch. Now we're going to define our jobs. In this case, we're going to only have one job, which is Flutter test. And you can rename this to whatever you want. Now, when you specify a name here, this will show when you run a specific workflow. In this case, we're going to run a Flutter test and analyze. So we will give the name of that. Now we just need to specify on which system we're going to run on. We're going to run on Ubuntu latest, but there's also Windows and Mac. And now we're going to specify the steps that this job is actually going to do. So here we can in order specify the actions we're going to do. We'll first tell the job to check out the actual repository. And we can do that with this specific action right here. After that, we're going to specify the Java action, which is then required for our Flutter actions that we're going to use afterwards. After we specify the Java actions, we're going to say which Java version we want to use. And we're going to use version 12. Now we can specify the action we're going to use for Flutter. This action is created by Sabocito, so make sure to start his project. This action will allow you to run the different Flutter commands, such as Flutter test, Flutter analyze, Flutter build, and more. And now we can use the with keyword, so we can specify which channel we're going to use. In our case, we will just run with the latest stable, but you could of course run with beta, dev, or master if you want to. Now, thanks to this action, we can specify what we're going to do. And that is running flutter pub get so you get that latest flutter stable version and now we specify the two commands that we want to run the first one we are going to do is run flutter analyze and then the second command we are going to run is flutter test so if either analyze or test fails we will get notified that in the actual workflow now we can go ahead and add all of these files and create a commit message we're just going to create a commit of something like add ci workflow for github actions after that, we're then going to directly push this to the master branch. Now, if we navigate to our repository and click on actions, you should see our workflow in that actions tab. But as we can see, we have no actual action running and that's because we haven't made our pull request yet. So moving back to the project, we're going to create a new branch. After we have created that branch, we're going to go to our test folder and the test. And this is just the normal Flutter project. So this is just the counter application, which comes with a test that we're just going to break right now. So after that, we're going to go ahead and add all of these changes again, create a new commit, something like make the test fail. And then we're going to push that to the branch we just created. And after that is pushed, we'll move back to the project and create a new pull request. Just make sure that the branch you created is going to merge to the master branch. 
After that, we can hit create pull request. And just as our pull request is created, we can see that our CI workflow has started. Now we can actually go ahead and move to the details of this pull request, which will take you to this view where you can see the actual action running. On the left, you can see the name we specified, so CI for the workflow, and we can also see the name for the job. We can also see the different steps that we created. As we pushed up a broken test, we should see now that the test should fail. Now looking into this failed test, we can see what actually went wrong. And here we can see that the test actually expected one widget to be found, but the widget could not be found as we set the text to 10. Now if we navigate back to the pull request, and we can see that all of the checks have failed. Now we can move back to our project and make the test work again. So we're just going to revert the change and just find a text of zero and go ahead and make a new commit. This time the name will be fix failing test. We will then go ahead and push that to the branch again. So if we now navigate to our pull request again, we can see the new commit and a new workflow has started. We're going to go ahead and see the details of that workflow and let the test run. And as we fixed our test, all of this should now work. So here we can see the test working. And if we navigate to our pull request again, we can now see that all checks have passed. Now as an extra bonus, we're also going to learn how we can actually build a Android and iOS application with GitHub Actions. So if we move over to the project again, and first off switch over to the master branch, we can go over to our CI YAML file and start adding additional jobs. So the first job we did was Flutter test. Now the second job we will do is build iOS. We'll start off by giving it a name, something like build Flutter iOS. Now we only want this to actually happen if the Flutter test is successful. So we can define a needs and here we can give the name of Flutter test. So we will only actually build Flutter iOS if the test is successful. Now we're going to define the machine we're going to run on. And in this case, it's going to be Mac OS latest. And now we're going to define the steps, which is going to be very similar to the one we did before. So we will go ahead and copy that and paste that into the build iOS step. The only thing we will actually change here is this run commands. We can go ahead and remove both the test and analyze. And for good measures, we can actually run a flutter clean before we build the iOS app. Now we can define the command that's actually going to build iOS. And as I missed writing no code sign, just make sure to do that. Now that is all we actually had to do for the build iOS step. Now we can go ahead and do the same for Android. So if you just copy the build iOS step and paste it in and just change the name. So instead of build iOS, we can have build app bundle. And of course, if you don't want to use the app bundle, you can have a APK instead if you want to. We're also going to update the machine it's going to run on. So instead of Mac OS, we're going to take Ubuntu latest. So now instead of build iOS no code sign, we're going to have Flutter build app bundle. Now we can go ahead and add all of these changes and make a new commit and add a message of something like add CI jobs for building Android and iOS. After that, we just go ahead and push that to the master branch. Now, after that is successful, we can go ahead and switch back to our test branch. Now, just make sure that when you're on this branch, you have to either rebase or merge in the latest changes from master. I am going to go ahead and rebase, but you can go with merge if that's what you prefer. Just make sure that if you're going with the rebase method, you have to push with the force flag. And in this case, I'm going with force with lease. Now, if we navigate back to the GitHub project, you can see that all tests pass and we're building for both iOS and Android. And we can see that the build jobs doesn't actually start until we have completed the test job. So after this fast forward, we should see that all of these tests passes. Now we don't only have a workflow for just running the test, but also building Android and iOS. And now moving back to the branch, we can see that everything is green. Now we have added continuous integration for our app. If you like these videos, consider supporting me on Patreon, where we have a bunch of different perks. Also, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like if you like this video or dislike if you disliked it. And I will see you in the next one.